our country. We are happy that we are meeting to discuss serious matters of leadership as it gives us comfort that our country will be in good hands in the future. Because leadership, you don't just become a leader. You grow to be a leader because you do something. Otherwise, if you just become a leader, everybody would be a leader. But you work for it, you grow through the ranks, and it is what you do, it is what you process in your thoughts, it is what becomes your objective and how you reach your objective. Young leaders you meet during an important month during which we remember the former president of the ANC and one of the foremost founding fathers of our democracy, the former president Oliver Reginald Tambo. President Tambo provided direction and leadership to the ANC and in that way the country during difficult times. <clears throat> Let me clarify the point. I don't want people to say I'm talking about the ANC because I'm a member of the ANC. No, I'm just talking about the history of this country. The ANC was the first political organization that was formed. There was no other organization for a long time, formed by the people of this country. And therefore, I always plead with the people that there should be no jealousy about it. It's just the facts of history. Isn't that so? He assured that, he ensured that a firm foundation is laid for the wonderful country we live in today, which enshrines the human rights, justice, non-racialism, and non-sexism, and which strives to achieve full equality and prosperity for all. President Tambo was a firm believer in education, one time a science teacher himself, and, and indeed he believed in excellence. He promoted patriotism, selflessness, humility, and hard work in the service of the country. These are the values he believed in, and he practiced them. I urge you to find out more about Mr. Tambo, our former president, and emulate him so that you can become outstanding leaders of this country. He is a good example. His history tells you that he comes from a very humble family. But he grew through the ranks and became one of the most outstanding leaders, not just of the country, but globally. So we could learn something from him. One of the founder members of one of the most important young <clears throat> organization of the young people founding member of the ANC Youth League as a young man. As a youth, you are a very important part of our country. Each generation produces its own youth with challenges of the time. 
the critical thing is how that youth responds to those challenging questions at the time. Census 2011 revealed that we are essentially a nation of young people. Just over a third of the population is under the age of 15. Thus, our focus on improving the quality of education is well placed. We are therefore pleased that the census results showcase the strides we have made in educating our country's children. According to the census results, the proportion of children with no school, no schooling, has halved over the period between 1996 and 2011. There is also a huge increase in the enrollment of our children from preschool to primary and high school right up to tertiary levels. Our focus on education is informed by the directives from the South African freedom lovers who drew up the Freedom Charter, which was adopted in 1955 in Clifton. The Charter on which the Constitution of the Republic is based pronounces eloquently on education, culture, and skills development. It says, and I quote, the doors of learning and culture shall be opened. The government shall discover, develop, and encourage national talent for the enhancement of our cultural life. All the cultural treasures of mankind shall, open, shall be open to all by free exchange of books, ideas, and contact with other lands. The aim of education shall be to teach the young, the youth, to love their people and their culture, to honor human brotherhood, liberty, and peace. Education shall be free, compulsory, universal, and equal for all children. Higher education and technical training shall be open to all by means of state allowances and scholarships awarded on the basis of merits. Adult illiteracy shall be ended by a mass state education plan. Teachers shall have all the rights of other citizens. The color bar in cultural life, in sport, and in education shall be abolished." Unquote. You are on the right track, therefore, in prioritizing leadership and education among young people. This means you are well poised to contribute to helping us deal with the, tri the triple challenges of poverty, inequality, and unemployment. Government alone can never successfully address these challenges. As young people, you need to find your own niche and contribute. For an example, you need to familiarize yourselves with the National Development Plan, the socioeconomic blueprint which outlines what type of society we want to have built by 
the year 2013. The National Development Plan is designed to help us take forward the work we have been doing over the past 19 years, aimed at achieving quality health care, water, sanitation, electricity, roads, and housing. In this manner, you as our children, especially the black majority, can have a better future than us and your grandparents. You should also be ready to contribute to the implementation of the National Youth Empowerment Accord that was signed in April this year. Social partners, business, labor, government, and the community sector, especially youth organizations committed to the Youth Employment Accord as an important step towards promoting youth empowerment and youth employment. We can make the accord work for young people. In fact, we can succeed in anything we do as South Africans when we set our sights to doing it. Therefore, let me invite you to be part of the process of driving the implementation of the National Development Plan and the Youth Accord to help us create a more prosperous South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, as you should be aware, our country has a remarkable constitution that protects the rights of all, including our special resource, the children. We also have the landmark and Progressive Children's Act of 2005, which outlines the rights of children amongst other legislation, caring communities protect children. We therefore rely on our communities to act as a buffer that protects our children from marauding criminals. And in fact, to protect children sometimes even from their own family members and relatives where necessary. It is therefore painful and shocking that we could bear, we could hear of incidents such as what has happened in Deep Slute, where children were killed in a horrific manner. Two little girls were also found dead in Kettler Hong, allegedly due to poisoning. There could never be any justification or reason for killing innocent, helpless, and defenseless children. Such cruelty should not go unpunished. We have directed the law enforcement agencies to do everything in their power to find the culprits. We urge the communities to contain their anger and exercise restraint. Such matters must be left to the police to handle. This reminds us that the need to re-inculcate time and honor value that every child is my child. And work together to protect our children.
We urge parents and relatives to exercise maximum vigilance at all times and ensure that children are safe. Ladies and gentlemen, and dear young people, let me emphasize again that the future of this country is in your hands. And it is not just a slogan, it's a reality. The man I talk about at the beginning, former President Tambo said so in his young age and began to shape the future of this country in his entire life. Perhaps we also did it when we were young. We did not say, let us wait until we grow up. Then only then shall we do something. You begin to shape it at this point where you are. Do not wait, therefore, for government or anyone else to do things for you. You must shape your own future now by taking an active part in all that is being done to develop our country. Show leadership. Don't say I will grow up and then show leadership. Show it now. Decide what you want to do, and you will be assisted to achieve your goals. South Africa is a much better country to live in now than before 1994. There are more opportunities for the youth in any field. Grab those opportunities and use them. More importantly, grab the opportunity to study. Please study and study hard. There is no better future you can shape than studying, accumulating knowledge, get to know what needs to be done to make the future of our country, of yourselves, better, study, and study the relevant subjects, not just for the sake of study. I was once a chancellor in the University of Zululand. At the end, I felt very bad, and I talked to the vice chancellor, and I said, there's something wrong. There are quite a number of students who were passing with distinctions and everything we can think of, but the studies they were passing were biblical studies. And I said, no, we need few pastors, bigger congregations, not the other way around. <laughs> because I just thought, these sharp minds ought to be studying science very important things. Now, they spend a lot of time, and I'm not saying people must not study biblical, biblical studies or religion, but at least that one, even my grandmother could read the Bible in Zulu. You <laughs> did not have to go to university for it. I'm not saying people shouldn't go. I'm just saying, for us to change the world, to understand the world, we must study, and study serious subjects. And don't finish one junior degree and think we have finished. Continue. In Zulu, we say, mfundo ekulel. Discover the world all the time. The more you study, you'll realize how complex the world is, how exciting it is to understand the complexity of the world and how, therefore, easy it is to play a role in shaping the future. We need various skills that will make our economy grow and create jobs. 
we must reduce people who work to find employment. And we must increase people who work to create, who study rather to create employment. You, you certainly need skills that will also make you run the economy and also to run your own businesses. All these opportunities are now available to all of you thanks to the freedom and democracy that was attained through blood, sweat, and tears before 1994. You have a responsibility to consolidate that democracy and the freedom attained in, in 1994 through exercising your hard-won right to vote in, in 2014 elections. Those of you who will be voting for the first time or who have siblings or relatives who are first-time voters, you must register to vote. You must use this right in the memory of those who are unable to do so today, like President Oliver Tambo, who ensured that you obtain this fundamental right according to all adults and young adults in modern democratic societies. The Election Commission, Electoral Commission, has announced the 9th to the 10th of November as the first registration period. Go out and register and ensure that all your friends, relatives, neighbors, and acquaintances do the same. South Africa is a wonderful country. You should make it even better by participating actively in the governance of the country and in building a more prosperous South Africa. Let me say something about what is commonly talked about today. Partly if I talk about voting, because voting is absolutely an important right you have, all of us, to have a say in how this country is governed. Once, when we have to choose a government, you have to exercise that right. I'm not talking about how you exercise it. I'm just talking in general. You have to exercise that right to make a choice of a government that must deal with the circumstances or the conditions of the country. How you exercise it, how the choice you make is your business. All I'm pleading for, use it. If you use it, in your own way, which doesn't take you anywhere, is your own right. If you use it correctly, is your own right. But it's important to use it. There is a say, which I disagree with, I must declare beforehand, that says people born after 1994, they don't know what they're doing on this earth. And I disagree with it. I've heard people saying, oh, these born freeze. They are going to be misled. I think is a very wrong statement to make. Because all it says, it says people born after 1994, they can't think. They can't differentiate between right and wrong. And it's wrong. It's not correct. People, they make an excuse because they don't know apathy. It's correct, it's, 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 it cannot be correct. 
I doubt that people today can say we have it all. We still suffer. There's still poor people who can't go to school. That's why we've got no fee schools. We have not reached a point where everybody has everything. So to say these people, because they were born after 1994, then they are now politically, economically, socially free, is wrong. It's an exaggeration of a wrong point, a wrong idea. And, and, and you could discourage people. It is just like when people were talking about our young people at one point, the lost generation. When they were with us every day, nobody lost, but they were told, lost generation. <laughs> You know, these people who can coin phrases love at times to coin misleading phrases. It is wrong to say people born after 1994, they don't know what to do in this country. Otherwise, there would be no kind of young leaders like yourselves. So I, I argue against it, and I hope those who use it should not because it really undermines our citizens, that they don't think sufficiently. <laughs> and those who know uh, hard conditions, they think very hard. It's not true. We are the same. So take your decision as a person and deal with the issue. Well, let me end our conversation, because I talked to you few years back, with your own mantra, which the eloquent leader said, is absolutely wonderful. And I quote you guys. <laughs> when the vessel of change departed its journey, none of us were aware of the nature of the storms that lied ahead of us, the depth of the seas that we would be sailing at, and the prospects of encountering the heavily armed pirates along our journey, but we remained focused amid all those uncertainties. Today, our vision is much stronger than it was yesterday. Our commitment as the captains of the vessel of change is much bigger than it was yesterday. And all our objectives are much clearer than they were yesterday." Unquote. It talks as if it is talking to me. When I was a young man, when I joined the struggle, you couldn't tell. When I was arrested, I remember, in 1963, and I was detained under 90 days detention, no visit, no charges, just torture, one way. And charged and convicted for 10 years, and went to Robben Island, and left Robben Island, and still I had to be rearrested and left the country to countries I did not know, because I said, I can't go back and waste time on Robben Island. We couldn't tell when it will end. Some of us thought it would be after we have long died. But here we are. We have sailed the seas and crossed the oceans. We are on the dry land. We can now shape the world together with you. This is so correct. And perhaps you are better placed, because we are no longer fighting the struggle to defeat the monster of apartheid. We are now fighting the struggle to shape your future. What a wonderful struggle. I wish I was a young man. I will grow the wings, and I will fly, and fly high, and change South Africa for the better, because we have what it takes to change South Africa. The world out there envy South Africa because they think we are wonderful people. And I think we are special people. We are special people, all of us. But you are more special, the young people, who have an opportunity 
that many did not have. You can make this country an example, as it is today. Already, South Africa is an example. I wish you all the best in your endeavors as young managers. Keep it up. Make South Africa the best. Thank you very much.